Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also, also with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim there was no water for the people to drink. People quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out so that the may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zon. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like waters. He led them with a cloud by day, and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliffs, and the waters gushed out like rivers. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, 
but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with him, with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did, did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. The tax collectors and prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we enter now these uh, last six weeks or so before the election, which will be a time of uh, incredible strife uh, and unpleasantness, uh, almost assuredly. There's no one that uh, really looks forward, I don't think, to the drama of this kind of conflict that we're living in, into in these coming days. And. It's interesting that at this very moment when we're doing that as a nation, we're also in our Gospels reading about this moment of enormous conflict for Jesus. These next six weeks we'll be with him during the same time period as he carries on his conflict with the Pharisees and the authorities in Jerusalem. And today, is the beginning of that conflict. What has happened since last week's Gospel are two important things. One is that he has entered into Jerusalem in kind of a popular parade. Folks have heard about him and they've run out to see him and they get all excited and start singing psalms and throwing branches in joy at his coming. It is a 
popular uprising almost, a popular demonstration, or at least the demonstration of how popular he is. And then he immediately goes to the temple and he overthrows the, the tables of the money changers and drives them out. And after he has done that, he leaves and goes back to Bethany for the night. Our reading today comes immediately the next morning. He goes into the temple once again. These days, this, this entrance into Jerusalem and this confrontation by overthrowing the tables in such a dramatic way must have been an extraordinarily exciting moment for the disciples. Here they were, after three years of taking along with him, and he has now come to this culmination point of his entire movement. And they must have been thrilled to, to see the, the popular uprising on his behalf, and also to see him be so dramatic in his first encounter, so confronted with the authorities. Usually, that's the way we see this. We usually see this as being the supporters of Jesus. And what a great moment this was, even though it was terrifying. But the gospel story is for everyone. And we might do better if we reviewed it and heard this story from the point of view of the Pharisees. And not just any Pharisee, but think of Nicodemus. Remember in the Gospel of John, he is the one, the Pharisee, the member of the Sanhedrin, who comes to Jesus at night, sort of secretly. And they have this conversation about what truth is. And it's a very philosophical conversation and Nicodemus is trying to, to figure out exactly where Jesus stands on things. And then he disappears. And later, a few chapters later, we find him in the Sanhedrin sort of arguing for leniency in, in terms of how they're going to deal with Jesus and this movement. And then we see him once again after the bear, uh, after the, his Jesus' death, he is assisting Joseph of Arimathea in the burial. Nicodemus is an example of, of a good Pharisee who is intrigued by Jesus. And so, think of him as these events have taken place. For one thing, there's a popular uprising. Now, a good Pharisee has good reason to be worried about that. The status quo is, in fact, what keeps them in power. And then there is this really unnecessary moment of confrontation overthrowing the, the table. Well, that's not going to make Nicodemus feel any more kindly towards this Jesus. It's a, it's a anxiety about the tactics that Jesus is using as he enters Jerusalem that has people like Nicodemus, who probably is representative of a huge body of people in Jerusalem who are sympathetic to parts of Jesus' ministry but very fearful of what it might mean to their own and so they encounter him right away. There's no, there's no doubt that this is a fair question. The day after he's overthrown the tables, by what authority do you do this? And he, as he often does, turns the question around and says, well, I'll answer that, but you tell me about John the Baptist. Did you find that he was from God or not from God? And the Pharisees are confounded because they can't answer this safely in either direction. And so Jesus in this 
response identifies himself, his authority, with the same authority John the Baptist had. His movement is my movement, he's saying. And our movement is one of inaugurating the kingdom of God, a kingdom which does not care about traditions and structures, but which does care about forgiveness and love and compassion and justice. This is the movement that we're about. And his movement is like it. And if you rejected John, then logically you will reject me. And then he tells this little parable about the, the two sons who are asked to go out and work in the vineyard, and one says no, and then goes and does it. And the other says yes, and doesn't do it. And he asks, which son did the one did the will of the Father? And that the Pharisees, there is no answer other than, of course, the one who did went out ultimately and did the work. And Jesus says, that's exactly the way it is with you. You have been invested with tradition, with, with power, with the authority of Moses, and yet you don't live by it. And that's the challenge for you. You are living your lives as hypocrites, and you are not living by what you are, have been given as a gift. So, the one who does the will of his Father is the one who follows John the Baptist and who follows Jesus. It is the one who does the kingdom that is doing the Father's will, not the one who talks about it. So, in these six weeks that we're coming up, there will be a lot of talk in the world of politics. And the only way that we can come through with integrity ourselves is to listen carefully and to know that we are grounded in a kingdom which is other, which is the one of John the Baptist and of Jesus. That is the kingdom to which we owe our primary allegiance. And to the extent that we can stay grounded in that, then we will survive these next six weeks, no matter how rough and tossing the seas become. It is the one who does the work in the vineyard. That is our call. Day in and day out in the midst of every piece of chaos in the world. It is to do the work in the vineyard that God has given us to do. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of our statement of faith. We believe in God the Creator, by whom every person in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of strife and uncertainty, we pray that you will guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice, equality, and peace. That we may honor one another and serve the common good. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this time of climate change and tumultuous weather disasters, we pray that you will give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honoring glory. Lord, in your mercy. In this time of shared challenges from the COVID virus, we pray that you will bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this time of so much anxiety and suffering, we pray that you will comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. All those suffering from the COVID virus and their families. Those who are on our minds, especially Samantha, Michael, Barbara, Daisy, Hope, Joe, Greg, Terry, Melissa, Priscilla, Lester, Susan, Adriana, Daniel, Adam, Emma, Marilyn, June, Francis, Kyle, Amanda, Linda, Paul, courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. In this time when we are so aware of our mortality, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Dottie Newberry, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also and with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in the word, your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take me, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we will remember his, his death, death, we proclaim, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection we, we await, await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heaven you have graciously accepted, accepted us, us living members, members of Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray the grace of this meal deeply in our hearts this week, bringing God's peace and love and joy and forgiveness to all those whom we meet, those with whom we live, and to all those who are in need. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator of Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.